the NSC staff assembled here. Let me thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come over and meet with us, sir. Uh, you see before you a very talented and dedicated staff uh, that uh, press reports to the contrary notwithstanding has been hard at work uh, these past two months. In fact, I think one of the things that is worthy of note is that there are a whole series of decisions uh, coming out of the, uh, the process. We talked this morning about INF. You're familiar with SDI and ABM. We had decisions in export uh, control, decisions on the $300 million for uh, Central America, the program, the Shamir visit. Uh, there's a whole series of things I can go on in quite some length uh, that uh, the country, unfortunately, is not hearing about. Um, but uh, the process is working, and these people are supporting you uh, loyally and competently, and we're just delighted you could take this time to do it, sir. Well, I'm very pleased to be here and, and to have this opportunity myself to, to uh, tell you what I expect of the NSC staff. And I've closely followed Frank Carlucci's progress in assembling a new team. And I think the results are impressive. So a welcome to those of you who are the newcomers and also a thanks to those of you who've been serving on the staff. I now with such distinction. Your collective experience and my professionalism I think are equal to that of any staff that has ever served the NSC. And the challenge before us has never been greater. The work of the council is critically important to the American people and of course to, to me. You, the members of the NSC, advise me on how best to mitigate domestic, foreign, and military policy that affect the nation's security. And there is no more important task or someone holding this job than the national security. That is the first and greatest call on the president. And the Tower Board has described a model of how the NSC system should work. And uh, it's a model that I fully endorse. And I'm quite sure you're going to follow because much already has been done to put that model in place. Now, sound management of the NSC NSC process is ultimately depends upon the skills and integrity of each one of you. And under my NSC advisor, stewards of this important process, each of you must work to help ensure its success. Views must be fully aired. Agency participation should not be shortcut. I want the range of options developed for my consideration. Legal issues must be addressed head on and the rule of law respected. And of course, recommendations and decisions must be properly documented. Good order is necessary for developing good policy. Your business is both. And I sit here supremely confident that you are equal to the task. And I look forward to the association we're going to have in the days ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Vice President, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, Howard, this is your first meeting. With it you. is indeed. Well, Frank, thank you very much, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to be here and to have a role to play in the uh, best years of the Reagan President. <laughs> and uh, I'd like this staff to know that I have great respect for you and I have enormous respect for your director. Frank Carlucci. Frank and I have established a perfect relationship. We confer frequently and freely, both of us in the service of the President, and I can assure you that I will continue to do that and continue to take your, uh, to heed your advice and counsel as we both confer the President on matters of great function. Well, let me reciprocate. I, uh, I am just delighted with how Baker is, is here, Mr. President. You couldn't have made a finer choice and these first, this first day and a half, I think we have established a very good relationship. Just one thing: this this man has to stop running up those stairs. Yeah, they, 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 in better shape, Mark. Uh, does anybody have any questions or want to say anything? I'm the president's been most generous with his time. Yes, fire away. <laughs> 
don't tell me that you've never did once that you said, if I ever had a chance, I would. <laughs> Mr. President, what I will do then is hold a regular staff meeting. <laughs> <laughs> they'll pay the price for that. <laughs> well, all right, but again, thank you all very much. I think, as I say, I have been critical of a lot of things having to do with government, as all of you know, but I thought government would become intrusive in a lot of ways, but there's one thing that I am equally strong about, and that is the prime function, as I said before, of the national government is the protection security of the people of the United States. And incidentally, in case any of you wonder about it, while I feel just as strong in spite of all the things that are being said today, about well, some things that we didn't know were going on, no, I don't believe in ransoming uh, kidnapped victims, because it only leads to more victims. But I do also at the same time believe equally strongly that when a citizen of the United States, wherever he or she may be, is denied unjustly their constitutional rights. It is the obligation of the government of the United States to rectify that situation. I think everybody in this room would agree with you, Mr. President. And we'll support you. That's to our vote. Thank you. Take any questions here. All of that later. We've got to get on with a with a meeting here. 
Uh, what do you plan to call these conservative members in the Senate? Oh, I've come here to listen to them. Here, here. <laughs> Well, that's true with anyone's birth. I tell you what, my mother said, you know, like my order. You got to be good to your kids because you never know when one of them might amount to something. <laughs> I think you ought to tell the president. <laughs> Hello, Jim. <laughs> you got to be good. Your kids, because you can never tell when one of them might amount to something. I didn't want to. I know that we haven't got much time, and I should be turning this over to you to dig off with. But you said something a moment ago that triggered my memory for a story I haven't told for years, and I'm going to have to tell it. He said that the crap about the last supper. He said that the Judas was it who was, it was Judas here or something. And the story was during wartime of the little Irish priest that was so anti-English that he just was lacing into them in every sermon. And finally, the bishop had to go to him and say, "I've never had what you feared before, but we're at war. There are allies. Surely you can lay off now of the British one in this situation." So the little Irish priest did in every mass until they came to Easter. They were coming there and he said, uh, today my sermon is about the Last Supper. And he said, it was at the Last Supper. And he says, the Lord stood up and he said, one of you here this day will betray me. He says, I repeat, one of you here this day will betray me. And up spoke Judas Iscariot and said, oh, I shine now, God. You doubt me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you all here. Thank you for coming down and inspiring away. Well, thank you uh, very much, Mr. President. I want to thank you, and I also want to thank Howard Baker for receiving our request and acting so promptly to arrange this meeting. I know that Oh, <laughs> these are friends. I was quiet. <laughs> I learned that microphones can be any place. <laughs> the photo that Marianne has taken will be released across the aisle, but the TV crew can put in house. I've got it. Well, go ahead. I'm just going to say that as far as we're on an aisle, our session. Certainly, we're, we're, we're agreed on the numbers. I would think that the only two things there could be verification, and then possibly that point of where their hundred are based so that they're not still able to turn and target the US. I think we can be fairly certain that they will not put them as close to Europe as they hinted they might. And we, in our treaty, we took care to, in effect, uh, push them back another 200 kilometers east of where they were in their original proposal. And I pointed out to the Turks and the Norwegians that we did that with them in mind, which, in fact, was the case. So I think that will work out pretty well. And uh, this is just what, uh, frankly, was the 